body, speech, and mind held in perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. May the hearers awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. Good morning, my uh, brothers, sisters, and friends. Welcome to our weekly uh, Sunday service. Today is the Sunday, December 11, 2016. How are you this morning? It's cold, but we are very warm with your presence. Try to make the effort uh, to come to the temple once a week, at least on Sunday morning because this is uh, our spiritual food. We have food uh, for our body every day, then we should take some time to take uh, spiritual food in order to nour nourish our mind. One day the Buddha gave us a very beautiful story. There was a young man who came to visit his friend and uh, after our talk, they sit together and have uh, lunch together. And when the friend offer him a bowl of soup, he tastes the soup, and the soup doesn't taste right for him because a little bit uh, not salty enough. So the, the, the friend walk back to the kitchen and give him some salt. So when they, he adds some salt in the soup and make the soup more tasty, more delicious. So he asked the, the friend, what did you put in? So why are the, the soup more tasty? And the friend said, oh, I just need to put, uh, you, all you need to do is put some more salt in. So this young man, he thought, just a little salt, you know already make the soup that tasty. So what about if I have a whole handful of salt into my mouth and this will make more tasty. So what is the problem here? Very salty for him, right? The story gave us an example of our daily practice. We all have our own knowledge. With our knowledge, we cannot inform anything whether it's right or wrong. So when we inform it's wrong, we're not going to do it. When we inform this is right, we try the best to do it. But none of the knowledge can compare to anyone because we all have different ways to understand life. The same as we all have different problems then we should take different way, different technique, different instruction in order to help us to transform our suffering and cultivate happiness. We all come from, diff from uh, different uh, situations. We all come from different backgrounds. But we try the best together. For example, somebody who were born in the West and you marry with an Asian lady, an Asian uh, man. Totally different background, cultural, traditions. Then what happened? We try to adapt. We try to learn from each other. So in order to make 
we are happy together. When we came to Canada, we know nothing. We don't know even a word in English. Then we go to work, we try to learn English, we try to adapt ourselves. And what happened with our best trying? And this is what we have now. So there is one thing to inform. Never underestimate ourselves. We are able to do something very special. The practice here is we learn to be moderate. If you taste a little bit first, if it's not that salty, you add a little bit more, but not too much. If it's too much, it will be very salty. Even sugar or salt or whatever. We need to moderate. So that's why Buddhism, the Buddha advised us to practice the middle path. When you're hungry, have something to eat. When you're thirsty, get something to drink. As long as the food makes you satisfy your hunger. The, the drink satisfy your thirsty. Don't worry what kind, because if you attach to the kind, you already block yourself. The important is there is some food for you, there is some drink for you. If it's good, you have it. If it's still not good as you, try to take enough for you. If you overeat, you get sick. This is the problem. So, you know, in the Buddhist practice, the monk, in the long time ago, we arm the food every day. So every morning, each of the monk, we will have an arming bowl. So every morning we walk on the street without any, you know, info whether this is a good house, this is a rich house, we just walk house to house. When people offer the food, just open the bowl, let the food in. When it's full, you go back to your temple and you share. You cannot finish that big bowl. So you share half to the one who stay to the, in the temple. And then the next day, you stay home, the other one arming the food. So that's why the reason why the arming of the bowl, arming bowl of the monk, quite big. Because each bowl share for two people. I used to um, remind all the young friends, it's all right for you to play game. We know you need some time to relax. We know you need some time to entertainment. But you have to know how much time you have each night. Do your homework first, and then if you have a little bit extra time, you can play your game. If it's time to go to bed, you should turn off your game and go to bed on time. If you go to bed on time, you wake up on time. If you wake up on time, you can go to school on time. If you sleep enough hours, you don't sleep in your class. So one thing you do right, the whole things you have right after that. So one thing you do wrong, everything will be turned upside down. Is that true? You can take time and you reflect that. You don't have to trust me right away. Because in Buddhism, there are three ways for you to practice. First, you need to learn. Secondly, you think about that. Thirdly, you do it. You don't have to trust me right away. Because believe someone right away is not necessary because we, the Buddha always advises us use our wisdom, insight in order before we practice. So we need to learn and we need to think carefully what we learn, how to do it. Let's say you learn um, to cook, uh, to make pizza. And then that, that is the ingredient, how much tomato sauce, how much cheese. But if you like more cheese, you can add in. 
If you don't like that much cheese, you can reduce. Not problem. As long as that pizza is appropriate and fit for what you need. So if you go to bed on time, everything else will be better. Let's say your mom asks you, put your shoes on the shelf after you walk home from school, hang up your coat. Only two simple things you do, then you will make the whole family happy. Your mom home, she see your coat hang in, uh, hang on, your shoes on the rack. What's wrong? She is not crazy, so she, she yell at you for nothing. You don't do your shoes, you don't use your jacket, you throw your backpack, you throw your toys, and later on, a big mess. So one, one small, tiny mess you clean up, you don't have a big mess. <coughs> when you do math, if you add one number wrong, your whole result will be wrong. So when you have an X on your homework, you can go back and read back all the problem. What is the key there? Why you have the whole thing wrong? You realize, you found out, just because you add it wrong, or you subtract it wrong. So one thing right, everything else will be right. One thing wrong, everything will be wrong. If you have the right view, of course you will think right. You see right, you think right, you say it, you talk about it right, you do it right, and the result will be right. Moderation. So that's why every day when we have meal in the temple, and we do encourage everyone to learn the five contemplations before you eat. And the third contemplation we should remember, memorize it. May we recognize and transform our unskilled state of mind, especially our greed, and learn to eat with moderation. Now I can tell you, you can practice Buddhism right in your daily life. You go to the buffet restaurant, you pay for that. And you know, when you have a buffet, then you don't have to worry how much you can take. You can eat whatever you need. But what happens if you take too much, you waste the food, you pay extra. And this is the rule, this is the law. It's all right for you to take as much as you need. So, what we do now? When you first roll, when you start your, your plate, make sure don't take too much. A little bit each. To try a little bit first. If you like it, you can come back, no problem. Why we need to take so much of the food that we never know the taste, and then it's so gross, we throw it away. Waste, and then slowly you train yourself, become greedy in such a way, in that way, but you never know. You slowly train yourself, become a greedy, but you don't know about that. So sometimes things we do, very negative, very bad, daily, now become a negative habit we never know. For example, you're easy to get mad, you're easy to, to get upset. You have a hot temper, you, you yell all the time. And every time you yell, people you know, run around and do something for you. And you think you are a hero. This is your great weapon. But actually, that is a negative habit. Maybe your mom please you, your dad please you, your family please you, but when you grow up, you socialize with others, they don't please you that way. So when you're young, you should train your positive habit more than a negative habit. Not only for young people, even us, the adults. If anything we do regularly, we will become a negative habit. And that habit will make us, will isolate ourselves. We have no friends. No one can socialize, get along, be with us, because we're so hard to deal. And we don't want this to happen. We used to remember. 
a life without friend as a day without sun. Even today is very cold outside, but you you feel great because we have the sunshine. You feel not that cold because of the sunshine. But if we have no sunshine, what happened? Oh, so cold outside, so boring. But if you look at the sunshine, you feel great. You have a day. Make sure we have a friend. But the Buddha gave us many types of friends that we should remember. So we will take time and talk about friends later on. The more you move into the Buddha's teaching, the more you find it so interesting, so many things taught by the Buddha and related to our daily life. And my one of my example is, there is nothing wrong for us to have a cell phone, right? We all need a cell phone. But we know that if we come to this meditation hall, this Buddha hall, it's time for our prayer, for our worship, we should turn the phone off. There is nothing wrong for one or two hours we off the phone. Why we should not off the phone? If you go to the, the, um, some government offices, they request you to turn off the phone and if you forgot, they yell at you. So we should remember that if we take time to come for the Sunday service, we already make the commitment. We come here for the service, the spiritual practice, then turn off the phone. 30 years ago, we have no phone. We're still alive peacefully. And how come we have no peace without a phone for two hours? So if you have the habit that every, you bring the phone and you leave it under your pillow. Every time when you wake up, you press on to see who, give, who send you a message. And you know that you're addicted. And that is not a good habit because you sleep with, you know, electric. It's not good for your brain. It's not good for your blood circulation. When you sleep, you should away from all the electric things like laptop like desktop, like cell phone, like iPad. It's not good for you to contact with electric because they will damage your health slowly. You don't see it. So in this, in this daily life, why we, need, why we, have a, we live? But why we live? What we are living for? We need to learn. Without learning, we cannot live happy. We still live, but no happy at all. With your learning, you have a happy living. So how come I still happy with my just water? But you also have water, but you don't have me. Just because you don't train yourself to adapt with any situation. So the practice here is moderate. The practicing of moderation. When you eat too much, you overeat, you don't feel well, you're so tired. So if you eat just enough, you feel better. Same thing. Nothing can be extremely, because if something extremely happy, then one day you will be extremely unhappy. So that's why when the Buddha, somebody blaming him on the street, and he just keep quiet and he continue his walk to another block, somebody praising him, he still keep normal. So when he go back to the temple, his disciple asks Buddha, this morning when you walk to that area, people praising you. You don't say anything, but when people blaming you, you still don't say anything. Why is that happen? The Buddha said, the Buddha asked, if somebody blaming you is not correct, are you going to sad with those kind of blaming? No. 
Because it's not true, it's not who you are, then why you should why should unhappy? And if the praising is yes, then don't train yourself into extremely because today they praising you, then they can blame you later. So there is nothing for you to be extremely happy or unhappy. Just keep yourself normal. So you can see that uh, any kind of drink are made by clear water. Clear water is the base. So the natural, you know, keep your mind in normal, in neutral is the best. That's why on the forehead of the Buddha, you used to see a dot right in his forehead. Not on the left side, not on the right side, just right in the center. It symbolizes for middle path. It symbolizes for moderation yourself. For example, on, um, on a Sunday, we offer you free vegetarian food. And you know it's a lot of work. The lady downstairs, they have to cook a night before, like yesterday night. And then they also come to the temple early morning to prepare for today's lunch. And they give us a, you know, just a small portion. After you finish the first bowl, that's the first plate, you want more, you're welcome to take another plate. But once you take another plate, make sure you try to finish the food. Or you can share with someone, but do not waste. And if you waste the food like that, there's nothing wrong, nobody will say anything. But you slowly train yourself, become the habit of, you know, always leave food back every meal you have. So if you sleep late, you will train yourself, become the habit of sleep late. If you wake up late, you also training yourself, you know, sleep, uh, wake up late. And when you wake up late, you late for your bus, you late for your school, and what is the result? You have detention, you, you know, lose your mark, lot of problems after that. So keep in mind the story about the salt. The little salt add in can make the soup better, but not, do not misunderstanding. A whole handful of salt into your mouth can make it tasty. It's only salty. Do you remember the story? So I hope that you take the story, keep it in your heart, and try to learn the practicing of moderation. Moderation. Thank you so much for your time and your listening. I hope that you will try to come uh, on Sunday morning uh, regularly so we can learn a lot of things um, for us to uh, practice. I remember a um, few months ago, I met uh, a group of young people downstairs while we give the talk and they're not really attend. And I give them a story, I ask them a question, I ask, let's say if you go to school and you don't go to class, you just, you know, get your friends and sit in the corner and talk all day and you learn something. They say no. I said same thing. If you try to take your time and come to sit in this Buddha hall, even 30 minutes or 20 minutes of uh, the talk, you will understand all, oh, but at least you get some point. Remember, one drop of water into this, this cup, a month later, you will have a full cup. Just one single drop. So one single good thing you do every day, you add up a major good thing. 
But if a, a tiny evil, tiny bad thing, you still do it every day, you will add up with a, a major evil. So, tiny good thing you do, you add up with good thing. Tiny bad thing you do, you also add up with that. So, a tiny negative habit you train yourself regularly, it becomes your habit. Once it becomes your habit, in Buddhism we call karma. Karma is the Buddhist term. In Vietnamese we call ngip. Karma is not somebody can give it to you. But you train yourself to become positive karma or negative karma. Depends on how much understand you can understand and how much you can do for yourself. The Buddha cannot take out negative from you, cannot install positive in, in us. We have to try the best to do it. Reading the prescription is never get treated unless we take the medication. Only medication can help us to overcome our sickness. Understanding the teachings is not enough. We need to practice the teachings. So why are we doing chanting every week? Are we chanting, are we read so the Buddha can hear our voices? No. We read over and over this in order to help us to memorize it by heart so we can do it regularly in daily life. All the words there, very reality, very practical. So we try to remember them as much as we can. We practice as much as we can and we can help ourselves. Once yourself is happy, people around you happy. Once you have peace, people around you can influence your peace. You can ask yourself, if one day your father is get mad, what happened to you? You do not dare to talk to him. So if he, he's happy, everybody happy. This is the truth. So we invest our peace to the world. So once we have peace, the world will have peace. Thank you.